On this episode of UTR, it's What You Been Up To, Part 2. We'll go back for Ipsy ice cream, eat awesome at Ema, and have a heap and helping of natural history. Then we zoom all the way back to Season 1 for a flotilla of fun in the thumb and a sweet delicious lady. Hi! Get ready to see what's new with some of the cool people, places, and things that make Michigan a great place to be. DestinationAnnArbor.org is your gateway to Chelsea, Dexter, Manchester, Milan, Celine, Ypsilanti, and Ann Arbor. Find out the best spots to eat, festivals to attend, activities to do, and places to discover at DestinationAnnArbor.org. A visit to the Stalls Auto Collection will take you back to a time when cars were more than just a way to get around. A fantastic assortment of gas pumps, neon signs, and automated music machines dating back 150 years that must be seen and heard. Info at StallsAuto.com. I've been around the world, but there's one place I keep coming back to. And the more I explore, the more I realize it's the place to be. I'm Tom Dalton, and this is Under the Radar, Michigan. Well, I warned you this might happen, and sure enough, it did. We had so much fun making the first ever UTR What You Been Up To special that, well, we're going to do it again right here right now. That's right, Tom. We've picked five more UTR alumni to catch up with so you can find out what's new since they were on the show a while ago. It's a great way to see how they've changed, grown, mutated, and morphed. It also affords me yet another chance to be socially responsible and distance myself from others for the greater good, aka keep my keys to right here in the office. So get ready to find out what's new with some old friends, because here we go. First up, we head back to a place called Go Ice Cream in Ypsilanti to find out if owner Rob Hess is still having as much frozen fun as he was when we were there over three years ago. Well, Rob, did that case of brain freeze that you had when I was there last time ever clear up? (laughs) No, I walk around with a permanent case of brain freeze. (laughs) Well, if you could really quick, because it's been three years since we were there, um, uh, sort of go back and explain to people how this all started. You were a filmmaker, correct? Yeah, originally I was a filmmaker and and, um, videographer at the University of Michigan. And um, that's always kind of been my, you know, life's passion prior to finding ice cream. Ice cream was really just a stress reliever for me. Um, And it turns out I must have been stressed by making movies. Um, (laughs) because I started making a lot of it. And um, one of the things that I loved about ice cream is one of the things that I love about filmmaking, which is it's a way to give people an experience. You know, you taste a thing, you love it. You start to like, wow, this reminds me of my grandma. This reminds me of summertime, that kind of thing. So ice cream was really similar to me. You started off, it's go ice cream because you actually would ride around on a bicycle and deliver the ice cream, correct? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was, it started off on the tricycle, which you've ridden and you know, you know, know what a fun time that is. Um, And uh, delivering ice creams around town. And the other reason I called it Go is because it really, ice cream was something that really, deciding I wanted to do ice cream was something that changed my life when I realized it was something that I loved. And so I wanted to make sure, I was always encouraging folks to go for the things that they love to do. Well, since we were there last, what's new? I mean, what, New flavors? You're, are you bacon? I heard you're a bacon stuff now. and yeah, We're doing all kinds of things. We've grown a lot since you guys were here. Um, we always have six ice cream flavors on at any given point. Um, we started doing birthday parties and weddings and off-site events and just all kinds of huge things since you guys were here. The thing that I think has been the most unique since you guys were here has really been the way that we've... Um, interacted with our community so i didn't realize when i started this that people want more than just an ice cream store they want a place where they can feel love and they want to where they can be appreciated and celebrated so we do fundraisers for libraries we do fundraisers for schools we do all kinds of things we're heavily involved with the lgbtq community we're just super involved in the community in that way and that to me has been probably the most important and special part of it is being able to show up to, for people in ways that really matter to them personally. Well, 
I've never said this about an ice cream parlor before, but you guys are downright therapeutic. Um, I mean, it's something we all need. And now that the state's opening back up and we're getting out, we're stretching our legs and rediscovering our neighbors, you know, for that matter, um, don't be surprised if you see me at that window real soon. Okay, that sounds great. I would love it. I've got so much chocolate ice cream here for you. <laughs> Well, it's nice to know that Rob is still in Ypsilanti turning frowns upside down with his incredible ice cream. If you get a chance, go to Go Ice Cream. It may sound redundant, but you'll probably have two scoops anyway. (laughs) Mmm, ice cream. Next up, we zoom a couple of years back to a place where the flavor profiles made us smile. Now, if you're a true food enthusiast and you saw this episode in season eight, I'm sure that by now you've made your way to Ema in Detroit's historic Corktown district. It's a chef-driven, Asian-inspired eatery that serves up an award-winning, ever-evolving menu of signature noodle dishes, rice bowls, curry dishes, small plates, and happy patrons. What's new with Chef Mike Ransom and his awesome Ema? Well, I'm going to ask him right now. Hey, Mike, I know this is a loaded question nowadays, but how are you doing? It's been a long time. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. Um, my mantra through the last couple months has been that every day is a new day, you know, and me and uh, my family and my friends and staff here have all been just taking every day in stride, you know, and just um, kind of waiting, waiting to see the next day be brighter than the last and also just checking in on folks around us and making sure that we can do what we can for each other, you know? Well, we all know the restaurant business is hard enough when everything's going right. So um, hang in there. I'm glad you are because that curry dish you have (laughs) at your place, I don't know how many times I've had it, but it's absolutely incredible. But I love your story. I love the fact that you grew up up north with hippie parents uh, that were already, they were food aware and food enlightened when you were a kid. You grow up, you become the chef, you go from Michigan to Chicago to San Francisco to Baltimore, then you come back and you open this restaurant that just blew people's minds. So, I mean, what's new now? What, what are you up to now? Well, you know, it's kind of recalibration for us right now. And we kind of had to go inward when all the COVID stuff hit. And we kept every restaurant open except for our Corktown location, which was our first location. Um, the reason behind that is that that restaurant was the most difficult to work within in social distance because it's such an intimate dining room. So we had to close Court Town and then we consolidated. And now over the last month, we've been in the, in the process of moving back out and adding lunch service to our restaurants. And we just opened Court Town a couple weeks ago now. People love your food because, I mean, nowadays it's tough to keep one location going. And you, as soon as we left there, you expanded to three locations. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, it, it's, been, it's been really exciting. It's been a whirlwind because, uh, you know, it's been four years since we opened our original location. And it feels like it's been six years, eight years. Um, but, you know, I guess the, the main thing is that we kept doing it organically. And it was always when, when a great opportunity was offered to us and the last restaurant in Midtown to be part of Wayne State and their student life and their faculty faculty life. It's been really exciting because Wayne State is definitely one of the shining points of Detroit to this day, you know. Yeah, I know. I know you you never set out to, um, I don't to create a destination place, but you totally did. I mean, I drive 25 miles when you just had the one location to get your food. And what I loved is when you were in that restaurant, you could, tell that you kind of created this mindset or this community there of people? No, that was, um, that was something that uh, my managers and I worked on from the beginning of the project because we've always been passionate about service and providing that experience to your guests. Um, and it's kind of the philosophy that when somebody walks into the restaurant, it's like they're walking into your home. When people leave the restaurant, you don't let them walk out, you say, bye and thank you and you acknowledge that they didn't have to be here you know they chose to spend time with us you know that kind of helps through the whole process of you know the food quality you know and and the the level of service and 
you know, and how we also how we work with each other as as coworkers. You know, we treat each other as we would want people to treat us in our homes. You know, so. Well, I don't mind driving to your other locations, but if you are considering a fourth location, looking out my window right now, there's some available land right outside my window. If you if you would mind opening a place there, I would love that. Is there a lake by nearby? Uh, there could be. If if that'll get you out here, I'll put one in. <laughs> I just need to get out and, and do a little fishing this summer. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> Mike is one of those young, passionate, motivated, and creative chefs who make munching in Michigan a true adventure. So as you venture back out to rediscover our great state, discover the menu at Ema. And you can take it from me, because I think I've had just about everything on it. Now, if you're a history buff, you know that back in season four, we went to the University of Michigan's Museum of Natural History for some learning and a load of fun. If you want to explore and learn about the natural world and our place in it, this is a place you need to peruse. From the great dinosaurs who stomped the earth to why it's so awesome to live in Michigan, you'll marvel at every exhibit in this museum. So what's this fascinating fossil-filled facility been up to for the past six years? Let's talk to Amy Harris. She's the director, so she'll know for sure. Uh, we, you know, we go to a lot of museums on our show. We've been to a ton. And I honestly have to say that yours is one of my very favorite. I mean, where else can you take just a few short steps and go 11 billion years back in time? <laughs> it's such a fascinating place. Yeah, we love it. And our, in our new museum space, we've reorganized the fossil exhibit so that it's literally a walk through time, just like you're describing. Well, I'm glad you said that because I didn't realize it, but you guys, since we were there quite a few years ago, you have a whole new digs. You've got a whole new building now, correct? That's right. We moved literally next door. A big new building was built next to the old museum, and we moved next door across the plaza. We even wheeled some of the skeletons. Well, I'm glad to see the mastodons are still there behind you. And if you could just tell the quick little story about them because they're actually a, a couple, correct? That's right. They're the only Mastodon couple on display in the world as far as we know. And uh, they're both pretty local. Uh, the smaller one is a female who was found in Owasso, Michigan. And the male is from Fort Wayne, Indiana. I had forgotten when we went there the first time, I had forgotten how much fun museums really are. Because a lot of people say, oh, museums, you know, they're, they're dark and stuffy or whatever. That place is just so alive with the past that you, I mean, you can't help but learn while you laugh. It's, 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 it's a wonderful place to take your family. That's right. I mean, it's, it's really fun because we have the dinosaurs and the fossils. And as, as you say, you can take a walk through the history of life on Earth. But it's also, this new building is a biological sciences research building. So you can look into active research labs and see scientists and students at work. But you have lots of new stuff going on, don't you? You've got um, a new Michigan exhibit coming up? Yes, the Michigan exhibit is open. Um, it's just a beautiful gallery. A lot of people have told me that it's their favorite. It has uh, life-size dioramas of five different uh, ecosystems in the state you just kind of feel like you're in nature. There's a soundscape in the background. There are also some exhibits about um, the early life of Michigan with fossils and a gigantic uh, wall map of the state so you can get a sense of it. There's an area for children as well, well including a cave, a little cave that you can roll into if you have a wheelchair. Oh, that's awesome. And I was blown away by the planetarium. I yeah. mean, talk about state of the art. Yes. It's it's, like you're actually flying through the cosmos. You kind of are. Yeah. yeah. With the, we have the latest technology in our planetarium, and it can take you anywhere in the universe. It's just incredible and, and also kind of relaxing to just sit back in our new comfortable chairs that lean back and <laughs> take it all in. Well, I, I, I made this offer the first time we were there a few years ago. But if you don't have a missing link exhibit, I am available. <laughs> Well, we'd love to have you come anytime. Oh, thanks. Gosh. <laughs> Where's my sloping brow? <laughs> so if you get a chance, go check out the new digs and see what else they've dug up 
at U of M's Museum of Natural History. I guarantee you'll have so much fun, you won't even realize you're learning. <laughs> Bonus. Well, all this talk about history has me thinking that maybe we should go all the way back and visit a couple of season ones, just for fun. So hop into your Wayback Machine and head up into Michigan's Thumb, because we're about to check in with Chris Boyle at Port Austin Kayak. What's he been up to for the past decade? Let's find out. Hey, Chris, can you believe it's been 10 years since we were up there first? No, it seems just like yesterday. Yeah, I mean, yeah, except we both have some gray hair to, to prove it's been 10 years, but... Uh, well, when we were up there in Port Austin the first time, season one, you were just in a little building. You weren't even on the water. You were in a little building across the street. And I understand things have changed a lot up there. Shortly after the show, we, uh, we ended up buying an old rundown marina in town that was at foreclosed, right on the water and on a river there. And uh, we moved our kayak shop down there and started renting from there. And then we started renovating it, fixing it up. And we put it in a retail shop. Uh, so we're selling outdoor retail clothing, and then shortly after that, we ordered, o opened a beer garden with a grill, and then the restaurant ended up taking off, and I had to build a kitchen for it. Yeah, so, I mean, you've actually turned Port Austin and your place into a destination. Yeah, it's been pretty amazing. Uh, people will drive two, three hours, sometimes all the way over from Grand Rapids, just a kayak for the day, go to see Turnip Rock. So it really has become a destination. You've almost started like this little it's a different mindset it's like a um it's like a community up there now because of you uh it, it's become a, a pretty amazing outdoor recreation space uh, we got some beautiful state parks up here and hiking trails and uh a brewery outdoor brewery opened up over the last couple of years and so we get a lot more outdoorsy people coming up here that want to experience the outdoors through biking hiking kayaking and we're working really hard to diversify the the reasons we want to bring people up here and things to do up here we've added uh, lots of art and we really want to try to become a destination for art lovers we've added a butterfly garden uh, and some cool beaches so we're, we want to give people a reason to stay for a couple of days when they come up here why do you think i mean why do you think you expanded so quickly uh, well, the, we, you know, we got a lot of free promotion up here through your show. That seemed to be the first step that kind of exploded us. People would be coming in and say, hey, I saw you on Under the Radar, and we've got to get out to Turnip Rock. But then shortly after that, Pure Michigan put us on the cover, Turnip Rock on the cover of the Pure Michigan magazine, and boom, we started really, really taking off. And then a couple years later, Pure Michigan uh, put us on a billboard that was through I think like 30 different states throughout the Midwest. Uh, we ended up on billboards on the side of buses in Chicago and Detroit, on billboards down in the Detroit area. And, you know, being in a little community, it's hard to afford promoting yourselves up here. And when we got all that free promotion, it just took off. And so I went from employing two, three high school kids when you were up here visiting me to uh, over 75 people last, uh, last summer. Well, save a couple of adult malted beverages for me and tell your dad that uh, to save me a little yellow cottage as well, because I'm coming up. Ah, sounds great. We can't wait to see you again. Chris Boyle and his creative clan continue to kayak Port Austin into an awesome future. If you're looking for a great little beach town treasure to dig up, just head up M53 to the tip of Michigan's thumb and have some fun. And you won't need a treasure map or nothing. Heck, even I found it. Well, our last UTR alumni look back just might be the sweetest. And I'm not talking about her pies either. And that's because Linda Hunt, who owns Sweetie Licious Bakery and Cafe in DeWitt, is probably the sweetest, nicest, most genuine person you will ever meet on this planet. Oh, and her pies are from another world. Well, the first thing I want, I want to do, Linda, is thank you. Because whether you realize it or not, because how sweet you are and how wonderful your pies are, you're probably helping a lot of people get through this crazy time we're in right now because, I mean, you're selling happiness and love in the form of a pie. But yeah. Yeah, So thank you so much for what you're doing. Thank you, Tom. That means a lot. I mean, obviously, you know that that's why we started the shop is to bring love to the world in our own little way. Like we always said, 
trying to change the world one pie at a time, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, I can't believe it's been a decade since we were first there. Kind of flies, isn't it? So, yeah, you know, I, I was thinking, oh, I really don't have much to say what's happened in the past few years. I'm like, oh my gosh, I was thinking on the way here, I guess a lot has happened. So, yeah, like, um, I wrote a cookbook, which is like one of my favorite things. Yes. So the delicious pies. It's actually in the second edition, and that's so fun to hear from people all over. And you know, it's part of our mission is for not only for me and us to so delicious to make pies, but for people to make pies at home, which is what we tried to do with you when you were here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tried. <laughs> we tried. We tried. Um, but yes. Yeah, so so that's been really, really great. And then, yeah, we opened up our shop in Grand Rapids. We've been there for like seven years. Um, wow. It's in the wonderful downtown market. We also won another Best in Show, the Crisco 100th Anniversary um, Best Innovation Pie. Gosh, we are in USA Today as one of the most charming pie shops in all America. Um, I, yeah. And we did the PBS show, which was wonderful. We did a couple of those. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it has been a lot in 10 years. I, I know. And, well, in 10 years, yeah, a lot can happen. But I just love it personally when good things happen to good people. And nobody deserves it more than you because... You're I mean, going to make me cry now. Well, no, don't, don't, don't cry. Wait, don't cry. Cry at the end. Save it for the end. But <laughs> okay. it's just, No, it's just the fact that you work so hard and you put so much passion into what you do. And like I said, love, it's like... That's the most heartwarming part. You know, obviously this isn't, you know, something that you make a lot of money on, but it never was made for that. Um, but the people that come back now, like the kids that we've been here 15 years and they're all grown up. And so people will come up with it, you know, at Christmas and Thanksgiving, we, we have to have this pie. This is like our favorite pie. I come, I come from California. All I could think about was this pie coming home, the tradition that that brings to our family. That is why we do it. And that's why our wonderful bakers do it. I've done kind of a lot that I wanted to do with the shop, but there's still a lot more to do. And then that's what the next generation is for, right? <laughs> maybe, I'll, maybe I'll come make pies with you or something when I retire. But yeah, you want, you want to relax and enjoy the pies of your labor because you have labored so hard, but it never seems like you are working just so full of life and love. And it's You know this from your, from your job, and it's like one of the most important things that I think um, that we get out of it is if you love what you do. Um, yes, it's hard work and all of that, but you know, the, the creative part and that passion that you have, it's just, it's so wonderful. And that's what keeps you, keeps you going. And, and the same thing that you do. I mean, you're showing Michigan and all these wonderful little places that certainly that's how I felt. You know, I still have people come in maybe once a week or something that'll say, I saw you at Under the Radar oh, God. That was 10 years ago. <laughs> people still will come in and say like, oh my gosh, I love that. It's been on our wish list, you know. And, and so literally it took 10 years for people to get here. So I hope we're here, you know, the show still running. You'll be like 100 years old. Still <laughs> I'm getting there. <laughs> well, well th thanks again. Thanks for, I mean, you touched so many hearts. You fill so many Ooh. tummies, made so many people happy. You can go ahead and cry now. <laughs> <laughs> I might have lost the moment. <laughs> Darn it! <laughs> if you haven't had a pie from Sweetie Licious yet, you don't know what you're missing. And if you have, well, you're probably missing it right now. And as for Linda, she literally personifies her pies. And to be honest, the world could sure use a lot more Lindas right about now. Well, that just about wraps up our second ever UTR What You Been Up To special. Hope you loved it. Hope you had fun. And speaking of fun, now that things are opening back up, it's time for you to go out and get you some. Because Jim and I, that's what we're planning on doing right now. Jim, start the car. Oh, yeah. DestinationAnnArbor.org is your gateway to Chelsea, Dexter, Manchester, Milan, Celine, Ypsilanti, and Ann Arbor. Find out the best spots to eat, festivals to attend, activities to do, and places to discover at DestinationAnnArbor.org. A visit to the Stalls Auto Collection will take you back to a time when cars were more than just a way to get around. A fantastic assortment of gas pumps, neon signs, and automated music machines dating back 150 years that must be seen and heard. Info at StallsAuto.com.
Okay, so you so you you, you put it one hand on one right. handle and one hand on the other okay. handle. It's time for you to go out. I think I just love that. How come yours already looks better than? <laughs> well, mine broke up already. Honey, that's so cute for a meatloaf. What? We'll figure out what's usable, which is mostly you, not much of me, and then we'll just go from there. So it does look good. That shot of the ceiling is phenomenal. <laughs> it actually looks like Europe. Look, there's Germany. <laughs> These are the Netherlands. There's Spain. Oh, do you want me to help take it over? Yeah, could you help me? Yeah. Look how good mine looks. <laughs> You want me to say, Jim, start the car, and then you then you can just yell, I'm busy, you start it. And I'll be, Ugh. I thought this would be easy. I thought making a pie would be like, like exactly. easy as pie. Yeah. Hey, look at that. Yay. Look at that background, man. Can you hear us? Hey, buddy. How are you? Good. Hey, you're right, that mural's awesome. Yeah, some local guys, uh, Joe and uh, Shingo did this work, and yeah, they, they just really did a fantastic job. Oh, Mine might I'm, not be savable. No, it's fixable. This will be actually on the show. Fold it like this, very gently. You don't, yeah, don't. Oh, fold. you fold it. Fold it, but there you go. Good job. Then very carefully fold it again. Very carefully. I just lost the Netherlands. <laughs> there you go. Despite my obvious natural pie making talent, I think I'll stick to my day job. I was meaning to ask you what that is over there. Oh, never mind. Look how perfect mine looks. <laughs> oh my God. I'm sorry. You're okay. killing me.